So previously we created this query to see which books were overdue and we also created a simple report to format this list nicely for printout but what we might want to do is send a letter to the people who've got these books to remind them to bring them back. Now you could use a mail merge in Word to do that and in some ways that does have benefits because Word is much better for example at coping with fields where the length of the text varies quite a lot so dictionary for example in the book title column there is quite a bit shorter than database development for dummies and Word uh, will deal with that uh, nicely. However if we look at this list here we'll see that two of the books are um, kept by the same person so if we were to use this query as the basis for a mail merge in Word, that person would get two letters. So I'm going to show you how to use grouping and reports to stop that happening, but also create uh, an output where each person gets a separate page um, for um, to, to, to be posted. So I'm going to go to the Create um, tab, and I'm going to go to Report Design. So the first thing I need to do is choose a data source. So I'm going to go to the property sheet, I'm going to go click the background, go to the data tab and I'm going to choose the overdue query as a source of the information and I'm also going to group. Now if you haven't got the grouping uh, option at the bottom you can right click and choose sorting and grouping. So I'm going to add a group and what I'm going to do is I'm going to group by uh, membership number. So that will have the effect of giving each um, you know, member of the library, their own set of uh, books or own, own grouping. So I'm going to choose that. And if I go to more, at the moment I've got a header section but I haven't got a footer section. So the list of books that's overdue, I'll probably want that to appear in the middle of my letter. So I'll have some, you know, preamble at the start saying, Dear uh, Joe Blogs, um, your following books are overdue. And then I'd want the list. And then I'd want a bit at the bottom saying, um, you know, please bring them back, yours sincerely, the library. So I will have a footer section and that will be the bottom half of my letter. And then I can close this just to get rid of that section because I've got a limited amount of space. So I'm going to have one letter per page so I can print them out, um, you know, stick them in envelopes and send them off. So I don't really need a page header or a footer. I could include some common information I suppose like the date um, but we don't need page numbering because each person's getting a separate page. So also the detail section I don't need to be quite that big. Okay so um, what we're going to have is we're going to have the address and um, some introduction at the top then we're going to have the list of books in the detail section in case they've got more than one that's overdue and then the sign off at the bottom. So um, the first problem is how we include the address or the, the name as part of the address. So obviously if you go to existing fields we've got things like the address. I've got my address in one big memo field but you might have separate fields for street, town, postcode etc. So um, address is fairly straightforward and even if you did have them in separate fields they'd appear underneath each other so um, spacing wouldn't be an issue. But if I put in um, for example title and forename and surname, so if I wanted this to appear in the letter, um, I don't need the labels because I'm just I'm laying it out like a letter so the text will be all in a row. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just put these together like that in the hope that it will string them together and give me one um, name. Now if I did that in Word that would be no problem. Um, it would adjust the length of the fields and it would wrap the text and it would all work nicely. But if I look at this now, what we see is we get gaps in the name. So Miss, big space, Joanne, space, Avery. And we could try and reduce the size of these boxes, but of course names aren't all the same length, so that's not going to work that nicely. You might have spotted in the properties on the Format tab, there are properties for um, can shrink and can grow. But unfortunately, they don't do what you'd hope either. So one way around this is to um, add an extra field. So if I go to um, these, the control section at the top and add a text box, and again I don't need the label on that so I'm going to click the label, delete it. Um, so I'm going to add a text box here and what I'm going to do is in the control source I'm going to use the builder to join together, concatenate the title, the forename and the surname. So I'm going to click on there, I'm going to go to data and control source and when I click on the um, the ellipsis button, the button with the three dots, 
I get the builder, just like the one I have in um, queries, and I'm going to pick the information from the, the report. Now, you could think, okay, I'm going to go to queries and choose that information from the query, but if you do that, it, it doesn't seem to like it. So you can choose it from elsewhere on the report. So I'm going to go title, and then I'm going to use an ampersand, so that's how you join text. I'm going to have a space, and then I'm going to have another ampersand, and then I'm going to have the forename, and then I'm going to have uh, another space, and then another ampersand, and we'll have the surname. Okay. So now, if I look at this report, hopefully we'll have that box with a name all together like that, and it, it'll cope, um, because it's stringing those three bits of text together sort of um, manually, if you like, and then it should cope with variable length names. However, we can still see the other fields there at the top, and they do actually need to be there, um, because we're actually joining together the text from these boxes rather than the text from the query. However, what you can do is you can um, highlight those, and on the format section uh, at the top of the list, uh, one of the first properties is visible, so you can say no, and we can see then we've only got the single name, and then you can, um, because it's further down, you might want it, so you can actually just put it on top there, and um, so you can have a small um, section if you want to, because obviously if you leave it uh, there, even though it's not visible, you'll get a gap at the top of your letter. Um, so I'm gonna add in address, underneath and obviously um, I, I should put this over on the right hand side so I'm not going to use a proper letter format it's not the place to describe how to write a letter but I'm just showing you some of the issues so now if I view that and um, we can see that um, it tells you uh, the name and the location so that's one way to do it another way to do it actually is to you can concatenate that information in the query and in some ways that's a bit less fiddly so if I delete that now and in fact delete those as well because the reason it's less fiddly is you don't need those hidden fields on your report so if I go back to my overdue query and go back to the design view what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra column and I'm just going to use the builder so I'm going to click with the right mouse button I'm going to go to build and um, I'm looking at the information. This is information about the um, borrower, isn't it? So I'm going to go to the borrower table, and we're going to have the title, and then we're going to have an ampersand and a space, and another ampersand, and the forename, and the then we'll have the another space and the surname. Okay, and we can change the name of that so we can call that a uh, full name or something appropriate so now when I run my query um, we get the full name in a single column in the query and if you want a bit more information on this go back and have a look at the um, calculations in queries video okay so that's now in there I'm just going to save that so if, now if I go back to my report we can see that I've now got the full name in there and I can just use full name and um, actually we've got what we've got there is I've still got the label on my address that's why there's a little bit of a mark uh, to the left of it and similarly there so I'm going to make my letter a bit wider and put these things uh, over on the right so that doesn't need to be quite so long does it so I'm going to put that there maybe and oh I seem to have lost my uh, full name so I'll just pop that back okay so the full name and again obviously it might want to be a bit longer than that okay so we could have more, a bit more of a preamble in there. You can put, if you want some text on the um, on there. So if you just wanted uh, an introduction, so obviously you'd have a salutation, dear, you know, Mister, dear, dear title, surname, um, which you could again concatenate. Um, and then if you wanted some just some you know, text that doesn't change, you can use a label for that. Um, so I could put on a label and um, say something like uh, the following books are overdue okay and then what I'd want probably in what well, in the details section I would have the list of books so what I'm going to have is um, the book title 
So I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, formatting these so they look nicer, but what you could do is you could put the headings in the bottom of the header section so they only appeared once. And then, um, so you could tidy it up a little bit. So actually my title is going to be quite long, isn't it? So I probably need to make this a little bit bigger. The other thing that's a little bit fiddly about Word, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, is that um, the paging, the size of the pages, um, isn't always default to something sensible. So I'm also going to put the date due on there so they know when it was, should have brought it back. And actually that's quite big for a date, isn't it? So I'll, I'll sort that out. Now this isn't particularly nice because obviously it's just used the field names. So if I, I then resize that to the minimum, uh, and then we'll have some more text at the bottom. So I'll have another label, um, just so obviously uh, you could word this a bit more diplomatically. But um, please bring the books back. OK, so we've got labels for the plain text. We've got uh, text boxes. And you can either concatenate the information in the field or in your query. So let's have a look at what this is looking like now. So we view that. So we've got the address at the top and some text. It's not lined up brilliantly, but you can see that you know the information is in there. Oh, well, in fact, my um, date due wasn't too short then it would appear. So let's there we go. So you could tweak the layout of that, and that's fine. Now when you view, it doesn't appear as it would appear necessarily on the printout. So probably what you want to do is choose print preview. Okay, so print preview. Let's have a look at that. So it's not looking brilliant, but um, we can see that it's included the right information. So the only problem now is that all this uh, information is one page. So Joanne Avery's letter with her one book and Margaret Bishop's letter with her two books are actually on the same sheet of paper. So what can we do about that? So I'm going to close the print preview and I'm going to go to the design view. So what I want to do is force a new page, include a page break. Now there is a page break um, symbol on the toolbar there that I can drag onto the page. But actually if you want just a whole section to appear on the page, um, then what you can do is you can go to the properties. So what I want to do is start a new page after my group footer. So the group footer will be the bottom of the letter. And then I want to force a new page after that before I go back around and start the group header. So if I select the membership uh, number footer, i.e. the group footer, um, notice in the properties on the format section, uh, there's this property that says force new page. So I'm going to say force new page after the section. So what that means is print the contents of the footer and then force a new page afterwards. So I'm going to say before section. And now, if I view um, the print preview, what we'll see is the first letter is uh, to Miss Joanne Avery, Avery, showing that a database developer book is overdue. And if I click the, the next page button here, we'll see that on the next page, we've got the uh, letter to Margaret Bishop with her two books on. However, we've got this um, please bring the books back um, at the top. So what's going on there? So if you get a problem like that, sometimes it's to do with alignment. So sometimes just making the thing a bit narrower might help. Um, so let's just check. Ah, it's because I, I selected the wrong option. So um, I said after section, but actually I seem to have selected before section. So after section, there we go. So let's try that again now. So now if I view it in the print preview. I've got the letter, I've got our address at the top, it tells us that the books are overdue, gives the details, says please bring them back. Click the next page button, it's a letter to Margaret Bishop, listing the books that she's got out that are overdue, and it's telling her to bring the books back, and that's the final page. So we've got two pages uh, for the two people, but they can contain multiple books because I've included the grouping.